Hey graphic designers, welcome. Look at this, some fine sand, mountains, clouds, frost. Regardless, all these images were generated using Materializer 1.5, the latest version of my add-on devoted to enhancing texturing effects. It is a good big update with two major additions. The first one is the opening of a new chapter, the environment chapter. The second, which is the main topic of this video, is to have the capability to combine eight maps for displacement. If you did not understand a word of that last sentence, do not worry, I will break it down for you. Let us be prompt and efficient when discussing the theory. A height map is an image consisting of black and white colors, which represents a scale of altitude in a visual form. Black represents zero altitude, in other words, the lowest point, and white represents the maximum altitude. You quickly understand what's going on with this example of a mountain. Black represents the lowest point, while white represents the highest point. The question you need to ask yourself is how this image is being utilized to distort the surface in question. Now that is a good question. Well, that is what we refer to as displacement. That's the term we use to describe it. However, you may inquire, what exactly is displacement? There are, in fact, two different approaches to configure this particular setting. The first one is to use a displace modifier. This one takes your image as input and uses it to warp the surface. However, it is the second method that interests me, the one that utilizes the shader editor. Attach your height map to a displacement node and then connect this node to the displacement output of the material. There is no activity and that is a normal situation. You need to adjust the material settings to properly account for the displacement effect. And there you have it, our peak appears. If you are attempting on your own, there is a high probability that it will not be successful. And for a good reason, you are missing one final ingredient, which is the concept of subdivision. This may sound dumb, but in order to distort geometry, it has to exist in the first place. You've got to break down your thingamajig. The level of subdivision will depend on how detailed you want it to be. It is evident that as you enhance the subdivision of your model, you will be able to retrieve a greater amount of intricate details and information. The method I'm using is particularly resource intensive. If you want to use all the pixels in your image, you're going to need an object with as many faces as pixels. A rapid calculation demonstrates that for a 4K image, you would require approximately 16 to 17 million pixels. That is absolutely crazy. I can assure you nobody in their right mind would ever think of doing something like that. But hey, for a decent level of detail, we're going to need about 4 million faces real quick, without any delay or hesitation. To optimize memory consumption, the recommended approach is to use adaptive subdivision for efficient memory management. Adjust your rendering engine settings and configure it to use cycles in experimental mode for optimal results in your rendering process. Then a subdivision section becomes visible, allowing you to set the subdivision level according to your preferences and requirements for greater control and precision. Adjust your rendering engine settings and configure it to use cycles in experimental mode for optimal results in your rendering process. Then a subdivision section becomes visible, allowing you to set the subdivision level according to your preferences and requirements for greater control and precision. What do these settings mean? The number of pixels represents the size of a face on the screen. In other words, a pixel means that Blender will subdivide your object until a face represents a pixel of your image. You do not have to go to such extreme settings, and it will also be contingent upon the power of your machine that you possess. You are going to inform me, but in what way can such an incredibly high level of subdivision be considered a more optimized solution compared to a traditional subdivision? Well, in the event that we decide to revisit our subdivision modifier, you will undoubtedly observe that a brand new box has unexpectedly appeared. And by checking this box, adaptive subdivision, only the visible parts of the camera will be subdivided. And that is where the optimization process comes in. Only the parts that are visible will be subdivided. And on top of that, the level of subdivision will depend on the amount of screen space occupied. 
In other words, the components near the camera will have significantly more detail, whereas the components that are farther away will have less detail, and the invisible parts won't be. Since at least half of our object is never visible, it saves a lot of memory. Now that you possess the fundamentals, let us delve into the business, and here is the objective we aim to achieve. I invite all of you to download the starting file so that all of you can follow along more easily. The hyperlink can be found in the description. Once you click on it, you will be directed to a page where you can access a map and an empty material. Switch the viewport to rendering mode. Please select the main node, press the F key on your keyboard, and then click the two layers button to proceed with the operation. To bring up the sidebar, press the N key and import the Sable node from the Environment section located in the interface of the application. Make sure to connect the color and normal inputs to the first layer, then set the roughness parameter to 0.8 and push the color selection slider all the way to the maximum value. While remaining in the sidebar, we can proceed to incorporate a SendWaves node into the design. This can be achieved by utilizing output 8 in conjunction with input 8 of the respective layer. Decrease the height to 0.005 and adjust the mid-level input to 0. Finally connect the displacement output. In order to maintain consistency between the size of the waves and the grains of sand, we made the decision to set the global scale value to 16. You got it? It's with the second layer that we're going to create the puddles. Turn the mid-level down to zero right away. By setting both mid-levels to the same value, you make sure that both layers are at the same starting height. Incorporate a flag door node and make use of the mask output in combination with the mix layers node for desired effects. I'm just changing the scale to two. To make a flag door, the recipe is simple. Select the exact same color as the material that is positioned underneath the puddle of water. Adjust the roughness parameter to a low value such as 0.05 in order to restore the shiny appearance of the water and bring back its glossy look that was lost. Once again, just take a look at the actual world to guess what comes next. We have to darken them wetlands. All you need to do is reduce the value parameter to a value that is below 0.5. In my example, a value of 0.33 seems right. The value isn't very important, it's mostly the technique that you need to remember. Now you have obtained the fundamental principles. Thanks to Sebastian for producing the informative screencast video tutorial. See you soon for new videos, and let's not forget, we get tired of everything except learning. See you later.